Um, hello, everyone. I'm Jia Hao Zhang from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, um, supervised by Professor Wen Qi Fan. Uh, today, I'm honored to share our latest work on graphene learning with efficient partial ray training. Um, so let's get, get started. Um, graphs are ubiquitous data structures in our daily life to describe uh, objects connecting with each other. Um, for example, um, user item interaction data in recommender systems can be naturally represented as e-commerce e graphs. Another example for graphs are our social networks. And it is also natural, naturally to represent those uh, molecules in chemicals as molecular graphs. So in order to effectively learn and mine structural knowledge from these uh, graph structure data, recent years have witnessed the rise of interest in graph representation learning. Um, the key of represent graph representation learning is to transform the non-Euclidean graph data into later node representations, and then leverage these later node representations to finish some down downstream prediction tasks on graphs. For example, graph classification, node classification, link predi prediction, and so on. Um, despite the previous success of um, graph machine learning models, uh, uh, concerns about detrimental effects of undesirable data on these kind of graph machine models are arising. Um, uh, let's consider social network as an example to explain the effect of undesirable data on these models. First of all, uh, in online social networks, uh, sometimes there are some mal malicious accounts who want to spread some misleading information or conduct some adversarial attack to promote the uh, influence of uh, misleading information in online social networks. Another example for undesirable data is inactive accounts. Uh, the prolonged inactivity of these inactive inact accounts can make their uh, social connections in online social networks no longer reliable, and this may degrade the performance of graph machine learning models trained on this bad data. And another problem may lies in the, uh, the sensitive data from deleted accounts. And, uh, in some regulations, the uh, online service owners are responsible for removing the sensitive data of del deleted accounts. And, uh, and we must remove the impact of these uh, sensitive data from trained graph machine learning models. So based on these three cases, we can find that it is highly desirable to remove the impact of some, ty some types of bad data from trained graph machine learning models. And this has bring a new strand of research, which is called graph learning. Informally speaking, the concept of graph learning can be formalized as, as this. Um, graph learning means that given a trained graph neural network model, f parameter rise by theta, trained on graph G with some undesirable data points, our goal is to remove the impact of these data points from the trained model. And in the end, uh, gain a clean model, which is represented by f theta prime. So how can we achieve graph learning? Let's consider the simplest uh, way to achieve uh, the graph learning. I think the most straightforward way to do so is to, uh, is to directly remove uh, these undesirable data points from the training graph and then retrain all the model from scratch and then we can get an unlearned model without the impact of those undesirable data points. However, um, the, these retraining based methods may have some inefficiency problems. For example, in some large scale uh, data sets, uh, which may have billions of nodes and edges, and also with some complex uh, graph machine learning models, retraining from scratch may be infeasible in this uh, difficult and real world settings. And an, another perspective to explain the uh, retraining from scratch strategy is that we can find retraining from scratch is the safest way to achieve graph learning. 
So to explain the idea of safe, we can find that firstly, if you directly remove the data points and re retrain the model from scratch, there is a 100% guarantee of data removal uh, of these uh, undesirable impacts. And, an and another advantage of retraining from scratch is, is that uh, you, do, you, do not, uh, you do not need to degrade the model performance. So based on our analysis on uh, the simplest retraining from scratch strategy, we can conclude three general goals for graph on learning. The first, the first goal is that when we do graph on learning, we aim to achieve accurate removal of the impact of these undesirable data. And after that, uh, there are some goals about the uh, the process of unlearning and the model utility. When we do graph unlearning, we, it is desirable that the unlearning efficiency should be high. So we can finish the unlearning process with low computational resource. And another goal is that uh, unle uh, in comparison with not unlearnable uh, and uh, general uh, graph mach machine learning models, unlearnable graph machine learning models uh, should have the property to preserve their prediction utility and preserve their high prediction performance. So, uh, so let's talk about the motivation of our work, uh, which is based on the uh, disadvantages of ex existing solutions. So the, f the first round of research in graph on learning is, uh, is approximate on learning, which means that if we want to remove the uh, impact of some data points, for example, a nose uh, including malicious contents. We can first locate the uh, impact of the node on the model parameters and do some man manipulations to the man model parameters and then alleviate the impact of these uh, undesirable data points by changing the model parameters. Um, so, uh, so let's think about can approximate unlearning achieve all the goals we mentioned before. Um, recent literature has, uh, has studied this problem. Um, some, some latest works in uh, security and privacy has found that uh, these uh, approximate unlearning approaches based on model parameter manipulation is not sufficient uh, to achieve 100% uh, removal guarantee. And, uh, may have some unforeseen secur security problems. So, so the answer for accurate removal is false. And uh, uh, for unlearning efficiency and model utility preservation, um, recent empirical results have found that approximate unlearning wor works on these two goals well. So here is another line of research in graph unlearning, which is called partial retraining. This is very different from uh, previous pr uh, approximate unlearning approaches. Um, specifically, uh, partial retraining based on unlearning approaches first partition the training data into multiple disjoint and independent uh, p small pieces, and then trains multiple irrelevant sum models on these da data pieces, or uh, sometimes they are also called shards or subgraphs. So, why do we, uh, what can we get? Uh, if we train the models in this uh, distributed and uh, disjoint setting. Uh, by training models in this setting, uh, we can allow unlearning by only retraining a sub-model, uh, which includes the undesirable impact uh, from some bad data points. Um, the idea of partial retraining is, uh, is very straightforward, since uh, the disjoint data partition and sub-model training process can confine the impact of data points in a smaller area. So we do not need to retrain all the sub models and we, we can uh, achieve unlearning by only um, retrain one or two sub models. So the unlearning process is, uh, is largely accelerated in this setting. So uh, we can also see if uh, these partial retraining methods can achieve the goals of graph unlearning. Because it is based on retraining, so uh, it should have the same guarantee as retraining from scratch. So it is clear that it has accurate removal. But recent empirical um, results have found that uh, the unlearning efficiency and model utility of partial retraining methods is not uh, desirable. Um, 
the model utility degradation in partial retraining methods is clear. This is because when you, uh, when you partition the graph into multiple subgraphs, um, the structural and semantic information in graphs are, are dropped. So this may cause the, uh, the, the performance drop of machine learning models. So in this paper, uh, our research revolves, in, revolves around this main research question. Our question is that, can we preserve the desirable property of retraining based on learning while significantly improving the model utility in this, prob in this paradigm? So as a result, we can achieve all the three on learning goals as we mentioned before. So we find that solving this research qu question is quite challenging. And here are the main technical challenges. We can see that the graph partition, partitioning process could break the uh, graph structure. So the first technical challenge is uh, how, how, to, uh, how to alleviate the loss of graph structure in the graph partitioning process. And another problem is that if you partition the whole training graph into multiple subgraphs, uh, sometimes the label distribution uh, of the training graph will be disturbed. And some, uh, some subgraphs may, may contain uh, unbalanced labels, and this may result in biased some models. And another problem is that compared with normal graph neural networks, uh, the partial retraining based graph neural networks have to make prediction with multiple sum models. And there also necess necessitates a novel ensemble method of these uh, isolatedly trained sum models. So how to solve these challenges? We found that there are two critical processes in this partial retraining based on, on learning approaches. The first one is partitioning, and the second one is effective aggregation. So we propose two innovative uh, methods on, uh, on both, uh, both key steps of this on, uh, on learning process. So, so, our, uh, so, so our design is highly principled. Uh, as, uh, uh, as, we, as our proposed effective uh, partitioning uh, method, uh, is designed to, uh, to, uh, to address the efficiency and, and model utility problem. Well, our uh, proposed effective some model aggregation approach uh, can further enhance the model utility of these submodels. And for the first goal of online learning, which is accurate removal, it is naturally achieved by the pa partial retraining paradigm. So here are the details of our proposed method. Um, uh, the, first, uh, the first module is the graph property of where sharding model, which, which is an effective graph subgraph partition model. Um, in this model, the key problem is that how to generate desirable graph partitions that match the unlearning goals. So to solve this problem, we propose a principled neural subgraph partition framework to generate desirable graph partitions. Um, this neural form framework first is trained on the training graph uh, to learn uh, how to partition the, uh, the training graph and satisfy some, uh, some constraints. And then it is inferenced on the training graph to get these desirable partitions. So an interesting problem uh, in, uh, in this module is that why should we use neural partitioning? So the technical rationale is that um, graph partitioning is naturally a combinatorial optimization problem and cannot be easily solved in polynomial time. And another advantage for neural partitioning is that the neural partitioning framework is, can flexibly ex express more complex optimization objectives, which is much more expressive than those traditional partitioning uh, approaches, such as uh, maybe k-means and kerny ganlin based methods. So, how can we uh, design expressive optimization objectives based on some simple design principles? We find that uh, we have already achieved the, uh, the exact removal goal with the partial retraining paradigm. So uh, there are remains two goals for us to achieve. The first one is efficiency, and the second one is model utility. To achieve, to achieve retraining efficiency, we use a widely adopted paradigm in distributed, distributed systems, which is load balancing. Specifically, we distribute the retraining cost of some models uh, into, uh, uniformly into these, uh, uh, into these subgraphs. 
uh, with the retraining load balance and loss function. And to achieve the model utility goal, uh, we, we follow our previous analysis and design uh, principled goals based on graph structure preservation and label balancing, uh, which is normalized edge cut and label distribution entropy, which can measure the uh, information richness in each subgraph. Uh, based on these principled objectives, we can we further derive uh, some, some simple uh, functions which can be uh, effectively implemented with uh, normal uh, deep learning libraries. And then we try to solve these uh, continuous optimization objectives with neural networks and, uh, and then get the desirable partitions with these neural networks. Um, after obtaining desirable graph partitions, the next problem lies in aggregating the uh, submodels. So in this stage, the main problem is that how to ensemble multiple independent graph neural networks to make precise predictions. Uh, if we first recap existing solutions, we can find that most existing uh, methods in uh, retraining based on learning use uh, average mean or attention-based methods, which ignore the graph structures. So our key idea in this design is that we try to incorporate the graph structures in the submodel aggregation process. Our first intuition of our design is that um, uh, we can find that uh, if, we, uh, if we take all the output from these submodels, we can get a local, uh, we can, sorry, we can get a gl global view of a single node. In contrast, if we just drop, randomly drop some uh, outputs of the submodels, we can get a local view of a node. So uh, these are naturally different views uh, of a single node. And uh, to this end, we can apply the contrastive learning mo method for free since we do not need extra uh, computational resources to do data augmentation. And another intuition is that uh, in the subgraph partitioning process, the cross uh, subgraph edges are dropped. So uh, it is naturally to find that we need to reconstruct them in the sum model aggregation phase. So uh, based on these two intuitions, uh, this result in our design of this graph contrastive sum model aggregation module. Firstly, uh, we just align the feature spaces of different um, some models and then fuse the representations with a trivial attention mechanism. And after that, uh, we first uh, generate a global view uh, with the fused representations from all subgraphs. And then we obtain a local view by randomly deactivating some attention scores and uh, uh, get another view for a single node. Uh, after that, we try to al align the local and global views of a single node and use this uh, contrastive loss uh, function to enhance the representations generated by the, the sub-model uh, aggregation module. And besides, we also try to recover the previously dropped edges with a margin loss. And in the end, we try to combine all these objectives uh, as well as the uh, general classification of the training objective and get the optimization objective of the aggregation module. It, fortunately, we find that uh, this submodel uh, aggregation uh, module can be trained only in 10 to 20 epochs and with a small subset of nodes in the training graph. So here are some preliminary results of our research. We find that the graph revoker, which is our proposed system, outperform all the retraining centered graph on learning approaches in both model utility and on learning efficiency. So this is the end of my presentation. If you are interested in our work, please refer to our paper and supplementary materials for more details. I would also like to thank my uh, supervisor, Prof, uh, Professor Wen Qifan, and two of my colleagues in our research group. Without their insights and partnership, I think it was impossible for me to finish this work. Um, at the end of this presentation, I would like also kindly to occupy your precious 30 seconds. Uh, we have a full res research paper about a scale scalable graph neural networks for a real-world recommendation system. 
whose title is Linear Time Graph Neural Networks for Scalable Recommendations. And this will be presented in uh, the afternoon of the, this Friday uh, in the poster session for recommender systems. Uh, if you are interested in an ultra-efficient graph neural network, which is as scalable as matrix factorization, please do not hes hesitate to contact us in this Friday afternoon. Thank you.